Hello again and welcome back to another one. And today we have a couple of topics to cover from one that shows Eminem's lyrics on Fuel continue to rise in popularity on social media platforms. As well, we got multiple posts that have hit over 20 million views in a day on platforms like TikTok. X, formerly known as Twitter, has also joined the party as we got viral posts about this that are also pushing 20 million views in less than 24 hours. However, this one raised eyebrows from fans who remember what it was like when the death of Slim Shady released and we'll expand on this momentarily as this just shows how fast people switch up due to trends. Today we also have more that shows Sean Strickland continue to bash MGK over his ties with Diddy and we got more updates from McMill, Jean Deal, Dr. Umar and also Toure who quote exposed some of the secrets about Diddy that he reportedly heard from some trusted sources and today we also have an update on an error from the last video. Video. But before we get to it, to keep the content flowing like the baby oil at Diddy parties, remember to hit the like button if you enjoy content like this and subscribe for more. And starting with the snippet that went viral on X about the indoor basketball court with king-sized beds, we got reports that this isn't from Diddy's mansion, but rather the Palms Casino Resort in Las Vegas, a suite that reportedly goes for $25,000 a night, something only people like Diddy could afford. That's for sure, but that wasn't from Diddy's mansion. And moving on, we also got an update from rapper Meek Mill. And like we covered in the last video, he believes someone is paying the media to link him to the Diddy parties. And he built on this point after he offered $100,000 in cash to investigators who could prove this. He added, the streets know what's up with me. That's not the case. We talking about business side. Somebody powering these bad campaigns. Shrugs emoji with Meek Mill again. I got $100,000 for a thorough investigation of who's powering and how exactly my name connect to this. And before we get to more on Didi that have surfaced, Eminem's fuel lyrics continue to blow up on social media and this time users on X have joined in on the party. This one, how the hell did Eminem even think of this bar, is approaching 20 million views and already surpassed a quarter million likes in less than 24 hours and many responses blew up acknowledging the genius of the bars. He is actually so creative. How does he even think of this loudly crying emoji? But if you've been following this channel since the death of Slim Shady released, you're probably confused as hell right now, seeing as these were the same exact bars that users on X were using to call the album trash just weeks ago. In fact, this exact same user with a quarter million likes was the same one trashing the bars just weeks ago. Hence responses like, the crazy thing is, this dude was bashing Eminem for saying this bar on Diddy when the album dropped, but now of course the bar is going viral, he gotta hop on the train, laughing emojis. This is just more proof that it is all about the trends and some aren't having it. You were literally making fun of this line when it dropped, piss off. And this blew up, it took y'all a century to get this bar. Diddy's arrest got the ball rolling, that's for sure. And wait till they find out what Eminem said on Fuel Shady Edition just days before the arrest. Remember, it took them over 50 business days to finally get the first version, so start the clock. And speaking on Diddy, this clip from 50 Cent clowning him before the event at Shreveport has made a comeback and it went viral again. Yeah, you're not gonna believe this. But I just got a call and Puffy's confirmed for Shreveport. It's lit! Nah, nah. That nigga can't come. He fuck around. Everybody be scared to drink. Come be cut. Fucking wake up, your butt sore. <laughs> Damn. And we got to hear from the Toure show's host who expanded on what he's heard about Diddy from some credible sources. Check out a snippet. Diddy has been an addict for 15 years. Asked what he prefers to use, someone said, I'm sure he's on the bleeding edge of whatever it is out there that can get you really up there. I had anonymous conversations with several people who know Diddy really well. People I trust, one of them told me, the last time I saw him, there was nothing behind his eyes but a vapid darkness. Diddy's years-long perpetual drug haze meant that some of the women who are suing him, he doesn't even remember them. And people who know him say they don't recognize him. He's been 
super up there and detached from himself for years. He hasn't acted like himself in years. There were multiple interventions and they all failed because no one could protect him from himself. Some people have said out of this, oh my God, which super powerful person did Diddy piss off? No, 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 no. You're missing it entirely. When Diddy and Cassie were together, he dragged her down into drug abuse. After she got away from him, she went to rehab. And in talking to people, she realized she had been through something crazy. And she began to find the courage to speak up. She went to him and said, I have a book. I've written everything. Give me $30 million to make it go away. And because he was in a haze, he did not say yes. He said no. He didn't have the perspective to understand what was really ahead of him. He had been living above the law for so long, he didn't realize what was about to happen. When Cassie sued him, that alerted federal prosecutors and started this whole thing falling apart. For the whole story, go to my substack, torre.substack.com. And on this note, a user expanded, and this coincides with Cassie's account as well, because she said he kept her on drugs and taking pills. She had to go to rehab and everything after she left Diddy. And we got King Crooked out here sharing some cryptic posts, perhaps the first time he's shared something linked to Diddy since the arrest, as he reposted this snippet from the Art of Dialogue that made its way to Fox News. Yeah, man, I know they gotta be shook, man, after finding out he was recording everything. But not only celebrities, not only celebrities, I don't think it's only celebrities gonna be shook. He had politicians. Come on, man. In there. He had princes in there. <sighs> Boy. He also had a couple of preachers in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. You personally, you think they got tapes? Well, my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted and his statements are true, they got them. They got tapes and stuff. Now, if Diddy had tapes, the feds have them. That's a lot of blackmail. And perhaps Eddie Griffin was onto something when he made these comments. This ain't going to make it. And it's gonna be the end of the story because we are waiting on the other names involved. You ain't gonna hear them. Guarantee you, you ain't gonna hear them. If princes and politicians are involved. However, we got to hear from Dr. Umar, who was previously asking for proof if Diddy committed any crimes. And now he's moved on to pointing out how Diddy only got arrested just in time to distract black people. Check out a snippet. I'm talking about the tiny, not just the agenda, the timing. You know why they gave black people Puff Daddy during election season? They want to distract you from the laws that they are passing. They want to distract you from the policies that they are enacting. They want to distract you from the initiatives that they are implementing. This is a distraction. And because they know black people love to see black people disgraced, humiliated, and destroyed. They said, throw them one of their own. Let's lynch another Negro today to send all the black people over here while we take care of business over here. This is a grand distraction. They always do this when they're planning something really, really big that they don't want American Negroes or Africans around the world to pay attention to. And we fall for the bait every time. There's nothing wrong with a conversation on Sean Puffy Combs, but when you scroll through black Twitter and you scroll through black Instagram and you scroll through black Facebook and you scroll through black TikTok and all you see is gossip. See, before they gave you Sean Puffy Combs on a silver platter, before they broke the news on Sean Combs, we were asking Kamala, what are you going to do for us? Before they broke the news on Sean Combs, we were asking Donald Trump, what are you going to do for us? 
You have been outsmarted. This is nothing but a distraction from the election. This is nothing but a distraction from Kamala Harris's procrastination. And those who've noticed how he'll just keep moving the goalpost, first he asked for proof, and now he's talking about how it is a distraction, and some have concluded, sometimes it is better to just sit back and observe. People that always need to have an opinion on every single thing annoy me. I wonder how the school he's been building for over 10 years is going right now. Do you need some money? An MMA fighter who has had a bone to pick with MGK for months continues to bash the former rapper due to his ties with Diddy. And he had this to add on the MGK's recent post. Bro best friends with a satanic PDF file and just ignores it. You're on Epstein's list? And when a user reminded him about MGK's message to him from the Impulsive podcast a while back, careful Sean, if you get him really angry, he will give you another quote big bro advice laughing emojis as a person who's just giving you big bro advice learn this shut the fuck up don't <laughs> don't speak on me anymore and live your life but you won't and i'm going to continue laughing at you because you're a fucking idiot. And to which Sean Strickland reacted with, guarantee Diddy had entanglements with him. Like he knew, hands down, they all knew. And boy, they kept going. It is the only way someone that untalented could make it. And Sean Strickland is getting praise for what he's doing to MGK. This is fun to watch. Keep on him, Sean. We need people at your level with a platform to keep the pressure on. Plus, it is quite entertaining. MGK ran from the hip-hop genre after he got exiled by Eminem, but if Diddy falls, based on his ties to his big bro, he may have nowhere to run this time. Turns out the vulture may run out of carrion, but wait, can they survive on baby oil? 